Subo Tov. Hope everyone kept uh, cool this Shabbos. Baruch Hashem, I have a very, uh, very good air conditioner, so it's good. Uh, we are continuing with the Path of the Just, Mesil Shasharm, and in the art score version which we use, we're on page 399, and we're on the chapter of Chasidus, piety, how to be a pious person. Now, it's important to keep in mind that the, the, the latter chapters of Mesil Shasharm are very high, lofty levels, and many of us may not be at that uh, at that level yet, at that spiritual level yet. However, it's important to learn it, nevertheless, for two reasons. One is to know, in order that we know what spiritual levels there are to attain, where we can go, what our goals can be. And number two is that maybe we can't apply everything to our lives, but there could be certain lessons and certain ideas that we could even now apply to our life when uh, even though we're not totally at that spiritual level. So until now, we've been talking about chasidus in maisa, which means piety in action, which the Ramchal is just going to say. And now he's going to talk about piety in thought, or piety in intent when doing certain mitzvahs. So let's get started. Until now, we've talked about chasidus when it comes to action. We're going to talk about chasidus that is dependent in intent. And this is something we spoke something about a similar topic, but not exactly the same. We talked about the difference between doing a mitzvah lishma and shalol lishma, meaning doing a mitzvah for pure reasons and for impure reasons. Because remember, we're supposed to do mitzvahs for impure reasons, or the, not necessarily, you know, we can do mitzvahs for personal benefit, uh, even though the ideal is to do it for just uh, totally because Hashem commanded us. That's the ideal way to do a mitzvah. But still, one should always do mitzvahs even for the wrong reasons because eventually he'll come to do them for the right reasons. So we already spoke about a similar topic. So he says, Amnam. He's going to talk about something similar. Somebody who wants to purify his soul before his creator, that he should sit with the righteous, the the, the righteous and, and the pious, to frequent Hashem's sanctuary and behold his pleasantness, and to receive reward in the next world. So a person, let's say, does mitzvos because he wants to get olam haba. He wants to be a righteous person and he wants to get close to Hashem in the next world. He says, for sure, this is not a wrong reason to do mitzvos, but but it's not the perfect reason to do mitzvos. It's not the ultimate reason to do mitzvos. Because nevertheless, even though he is... He, even though he's doing mitzvahs, he's still doing mitzvahs for his own benefit. So this isn't what we would call a bad intent when doing mitzvahs, but however, it's not the ultimate intent. It's not the best intent. Ah, What is the true intent that is found by the pious, which they work for and are tareach and try very hard their whole lives to reach it? A person, this person on this lofty level, he does mitzvahs only for the honor of Hashem. That the honor of Hashem should be increased and glorified. Now it's interesting. So, well, first of all, to get to this level, this is a very lofty level. We're talking about a person, right, to, to do all the mitzvahs just you know, because you want to get into the next world, into Olam Haba, and be close to Hashem, that, that's, to get to that level, that's already a, a tough level. You know, that's not so easy to get to. But here we're talking about an even higher level. Somebody who does mitzvahs, not because of any benefit, he doesn't even care about his Olam Haba, what he's going to get in the next world. He only does mitzvahs in order to glorify Hashem's name. Because God commanded him to do this, and when he does mitzvahs, he listens to what God says, he glorifies God's name. And it's interesting that um, points of the uh, Mother Seal Solomon they bring at the bottom points out that even this level he writes the Ramchal acknowledges that he has to 
work very hard to toil to attain this level. This is not an easy level. Somebody who is even already on a high level has to work even harder to get this level. This is after the love of Hashem overwhelms him. And he just has this tremendous desire to glorify Hashem. It pains him when people don't honor Hashem properly. And this is why he serves Hashem. It says at least by him, he can glorify Hashem by serving Him properly. But it and it pains him when others don't do that. All the more so, let's say he himself doesn't do a mitzvah because uh, he makes a mistake, or the circumstances beyond his control, or he's weak. Because it's it's hard for everyone. Even we're talking about here someone who is at the top of the ladder when it comes to spiritual perfection, or close, let's say close to the top of the ladder through spiritual perfection. And even he, sometimes, he or she will do sins by accident or circumstances beyond the control every week. And as it says in the verse, There is no such thing as a totally righteous person who has never sinned. So this person... He obviously, he's not going to do a sin on purpose because he is very holy, but when he does a sin by accident or due to circumstances beyond his control, he, it pains him. It's, it, it, it actually causes him distress because he, all he cares about is honoring Hashem, even though it's, it seems to be, as the verse says, that everybody sins. We're all human beings. We are all imperfect. And even this person who is on this lofty, lofty level, even he sins. And this is explained in the Tanah Devei Eliyahu, Zohar Tov Amru. It says, they say, Any wise person from the Jewish people that has words of Torah, and he is pained for the honor of Hashem and the honor of the Jewish people all of his days, and and he desires, and it hurts him about the honor of Jerusalem, right? The temple, we're in exile, the temple is destroyed. And he and it bothers him the, the, the fact that the temple is destroyed, and he wants the salvation to come quickly, and that the Jewish people should be ingathered back to Israel. Such a person merits divine inspiration. We find that this is the desired intent that is very far from any personal personal uh, enjoyment or personal uh, personal drive. His whole the the chassid. His whole intent is to honor Hashem, and to sanctify His name, because Hashem's name becomes sanctified when His creations do what uh, what they're supposed to do. When we act according to the Torah, when we act according to the way Hashem has asked for, asked us, that's a sanctification of Hashem's name. And this it says, Who is a chassid? Who is pious? Someone who does kindness with his creator. Now, obviously, we can't do kindness to God. God is perfect. There's nothing we can give God. But Ki'ilu, it's like uh, it's like that we give Hashem kindness when we honor him by doing, doing his will. Okay, so we're learning that a chassid, the proper intent to have, the best intent is that a person does mitzvos to glorify Hashem's name. And a chassid is also somebody who, it pains him for the distress of the Jewish people. The, well, he's going to explain that now, actually. Let's read it. Now, the chassid, the pious person, besides the perfect intent that he has when he does the mitzvahs, 
that we just mentioned. Hine vade tsar shid star tamit tsar mamish al hagalos va al achorban. The chassid is always pained at any tsar mamish. He feels real pain over the exile and on the destruction of the temple. Mitzad mash is a gar mute kiviachal lichvodu yizbarach. Because this causes a lack of honor of Hashem. Right, the chassid is this person. He only the only reason he does the 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 reason that he does mitzvos is because he wants Hashem to be honored. So it bothers him in any any way that his honor is decreased, and that is expressed in the fact that we don't have a temple. When we had a temple in Jerusalem and we had the Jewish people in Israel, that was the a higher, much higher level of existence than we have now. There were miracles going on. There was divine inspiration. People saw Hashem's hand in creation on a more daily basis. That's the way it's supposed to be. Hashem's glory is uh, existent in the world. We just learned in Derech Hashem this past, uh, this past week that there are four levels of creation. And the level that we're on now, where we're in Galus, is, is lower than the level when we had a temple in Jerusalem. And that's even lower than before Mashiach comes. But each of those levels, the higher and higher level, the chassid yearns to have that high, higher level of spirituality because it's more honor for Hashem. More honor for Hashem when he, Hashem is actively expressing His will in the world. And this chassid yearns for the redemption because that will be an elevation of the honor of Hashem. This is what the Tana Devealiyah was writing above. And it pains him. He wants the honor of Jerusalem, and it pains him the state that it's in now. And he davens for the redemption of the Jewish people. That the honor of heaven be returned to uh, to its higher level. Okay, so we'll stop here. We're gonna next week, God willing, continue on this topic about how a chassid. He's not. A chasa we see here is not some. He's not concerned about himself. He doesn't even do mitzvos for his own reward in Olam Haba. He does mitzvos because all he's concerned about is the honor of Hashem, and he's concerned about the lack of honor of Hashem, the fact that we don't have a temple, and he pains him that we don't have a temple, and that Hashem's honor is not expressed in the ultimate way possible. And even though many of us may not be on this level, where we're literally pained about the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem, and we only do mitzvahs for Hashem's honor, but this is a, an intent, perhaps, that sometimes we could think about. We could think about, I can do this mitzvah to honor Hashem. Uh, or, you know, how can I in my life do something for uh, for the honor of Hashem? And, you know, it, it might, we're probably not at the level where we will be able to do this uh, in every area, but maybe uh, in certain areas we could we could do this. Okay. And on that, I wish everyone a very beautiful week and uh, stay cool and drink a lot of water.